Hi, today I want to look at a game where I am playing Black against German Grandmaster Gerard Schäbler. This was a 5 minute auto pairing game on the Internet Chess Club, played on the 13th of November 2009. My opponent's rating was 2459 and my rating was 2207. In this position, it is equal material. I have terrible tripled isolated pawns on the f-file. I played rook d2. Rook d1 check, king h2, rook a1 was the best way to defend. When rook takes f3, king g7, king g2, rook takes a2 should be a draw. White is slightly better, however. Instead, I played rook d2. Now my opponent played the crazy king h2. Rook takes f3 is much better. Rook takes a2, rook takes f6, king g7, rook f4, and white has a clear advantage. So my opponent played king h2, leaving the f-pawn on pre. I think he was expecting rook d1 check and had pre-moved this move. I simply took the hanging f-pawn, rook takes f2 check, king h3. Now I didn't see white's threat of king g4, so I played king g7. Black should seal the white king in with f5. G4, F takes G4, check, King takes G4, Rook takes A2, King takes F3, B6. Black is in a much better position compared to the game. In the game I played King G7, which is a mistake, King G4, and now White wins the F-pawn. Rook takes A2, Rook takes F3. It is often the case that the first major mistake doesn't lose. We, we can clearly see, see it in this example and white is right back into the game after losing that f-pawn. Rook e2, rook d3, rook e7. I wanted to defend the 7th rank, but this move is a bit passive. Rook d2. Black's extra pawn doesn't really doesn't mean much as his f-pawns are doubled and isolated. In fact, they hinder the black king by imprisoning him. Now I played king h7. After the game, I thought b6 was much better. Black can achieve at least a draw after king f3, rook c7, c4, a5, b takes a5, b takes a5. His passed a pawn is quite strong and he can use his king via f8 to stop white's c pawn. In the game I played king h7, c4, king g7, c5. I think this is a correct way for white to play. He will eventually try to make a passed pawn with b5 and c6. And obviously black is playing a bit passively, and I realized this was a mistake after the game. And now I played rook c7. This is not a good move. Rook e3 was better. And now of course white does not play rook d7, trying to evade on the 7th rank, since rook e4 check picks up material. So instead king f4, rook b3, and now black's rook is active. And this was better than what I played in the game. In the game I played rook c7. Again black is playing too passively. Rook d6, rook e7, rook d4, king g6. This doesn't achieve anything. White just plays h5 check. King g7, king f4. Rook c7, rook d6, rook e7, g4. And now I played f5. Um, rook c7 would have kept my options open. And I think f5 is, sli is a slight error. I felt as if the pawn was worthless, so I ditched it. But um, yeah, keeping the pawn would have kept my options open. And in fact, it would have hindered the white king as it stops white from going to the e5 square. So after f5, king takes f5. White has a slight advantage due to his superior king position, active rook and far advanced pawns. His plan now would be to create a pass pawn on the queen side and support it with his king and rook. Rook c7, king e5. This is inaccurate. I should have taken advantage of white's momentary awkward placing of pieces by playing a5. b takes a5, rook takes c5 check, rook d5, rook c4, king f5, rook b4. Black defends everything and white will have problems making progress as his king is stuck to the g pawn. The position should be drawn. Instead, I played the miserable rook e7 check. Although I didn't realize this at the time, I was violating a key endgame principle, which I already knew. In rook endgames, you must ensure that your rook is active. 
Many of the variations I've shown are based on this concept. My opponent played king d5, rook e3, and now I try to go active, but it is a bit late. And now my opponent played the howler, rook d7. King c4 would have given white good chances of winning, for example, rook e4 check, rook d4, rook e7 b5, rook c7, rook d8. And now, followed by king d5 and c6 would be devastating. Instead, my opponent played the shocking rook d7. This move was played under time pressure. My opponent only had 40 seconds left. How does black win here? The simple check rook d3 check picks up the rook, as the squares c6 and e6 are covered by my pawns. So my opponent has to give up the rook king e5, rook takes d7. And now I only had 9 seconds left on the clock. I now made extensive use of the pre-move technique and was able to win on move 73. In this final position I only had 0.7 seconds left on the clock. I was very lucky not to have run out of time. Thanks for watching this video.